Who thought this was a good idea? I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna be using the same limitations as the previous video. At least half of the team needs to match the gym leader's speciality, as long as the other Pokemon do make sense. So although it's not a dragon type, Claire could have a Feraligator, but she's probably not gonna have a Shuckle. Sorry, buddy. Each gym leader is also going to have a signature move. This will be a move that is unique on the ace Pokemon of that gym, and it will also be the TM that you'll give them for beating them. Talking of TMs, we're going to give the gym leaders access to any move available for that given Pokemon. So a level 38 Makargo could have access to Acid Armor, Rest and Body Slam, even though they're an Egg move, TM and a later learnt move respectively. The last rule is less of a rule and more of a standard, but I'll be making these teams under the impression that the game will balance around them. Anyway, enough talking. To kick things off, we have the Bird Boy Faulkner. His old team is Pidgey and Pidgeotto as the ace, and I'm not sure I need to explain why this is a bad team, but I'll touch upon it anyway. No Johto Pokemon, and he uses an illegal Pidgeotto at level 9. Not to mention, his signature move is Mud Slap. Not only is that a terrible move in general, but it's also not a flying type move. In fact, he's the only one of the 8 gym leaders to not give you a move of that gym's type. So to begin this fix, I'm going to remove both of his Pokemon. We want some Jotonium representation in the first gym, we don't want Pidgey and Big Pidgey. It's quite literally an early root bird, it's not interesting in the slightest. So we're looking for a Jotonian flying type with around 400 base stat total to be the ace. Our choice are Ladian, Togetic, Yanma and Murkrow. The choice, therefore, is kind of easy, since Bugsy is the next gym, the bug types are out. Besides, Faulkner's a bird keeper anyway. Togetic is kind of a bird, but since it's a rare Pokemon that you're going to get from the Mysterious Egg, I think that rules that out as well. That leaves Murkrow, who I think is a great choice. It's surprisingly strong for how small it is at 405 BST, and I know a lot of you are expecting Noctowl to be the ace, but honestly, it's a bit too strong for my liking. It has a base stat total of 442, so it's closer in strength to a Pidgeot than it is a Pidgeotto, and I feel like that's a bit strong for the first gym. We will, however, give Faulkner a Hoot Hoot instead of a Pidgey. It's a weak Jotonian bird that fits right at home, and that's pretty much it. So what about Murkrow's signature move? Well, looking at the flying type attacks in Generation 2, there isn't much choice, but one move does stick out to me above the rest, and that is Mirror Move. It's not only a fun move in its own right, but it will give you something to teach your Togetic later down the line. So with that, this is Faulkner's new team. I honestly couldn't make it any worse than what it was already, so I think we nailed it. You'll notice that Murkrow is holding an Oranberry, something that didn't actually exist in Generation 2. Instead of there being an Oranberry, a Citrus Berry, a Chesto Berry, they all have their own unique Generation 2 equivalents. But since there are no in-game depictions of them berries, I thought it was just easier to use their modern day counterparts. So what do you think of Faulkner's new team? Is it better than the other one? I would assume that your answer is yes, unless you're a die-hard Pidgey fan. Woohoo! And um, talking about liking things... You should like the video! Thank you, moving on to Bugsy. A team that is somehow even worse than Faulkner's. How, how have you done this? Not only is it three Kanto Pokemon, but two of the three are infamously useless. I truly understand that Gold and Silver were designed as an expansion to Kanto and not a separate game, but they seriously couldn't think of a better team than this. Once again, we're starting over for this one, and let's start with the obvious. Scyther is out, and Heracross is in. They have the same base stat total at 500, so I don't know why they didn't do this from the start. Heracross can also learn Fury Cutter. I'm going to keep it as a signature move because I like the pressure that it applies to the player if it builds up too much. The other Pokemon on the team will be Spinarak and Ladybug. Spinarak's primary job is to reduce the speed of the players in hopes of helping out Heracross later in the battle. And Ladybug's here because it's a weak bug type. Since Heracross is quite strong, I wanted to keep the other Pokemon a bit weaker, so no Pokemon like Pineco or Yanma. There's not much thinking involved in this one. He's a bug catcher. He got bugs. So far, we've had a bird keeper and a bug catcher. The teams have pretty much wrote themselves, and I've had very little chance to flex my creative muscles. Whitney, however, is a leader that I like since she's carried by vibe and not a type. Yes, her primary type is normal, however, her vibe is just cute female pink Pokemon. So if we're going to discuss Whitney, we should really address the cow in the room. 
Most people think that this cow is extremely annoying and the bane of most Johto runs. I'm gonna keep Miltank as the ace, but I'm gonna amend that sadistic moveset. The issue is that it can heal, flinch, and attract. Attract is gonna remain on the moveset since it makes sense for Whitney and it can be avoided by simply bringing a female Pokemon. Rollout can stay since it's an appropriate attacking move for it and I never felt like Rollout was a problem to begin with. Yes, it does get powerful, but... Eh. The healing move Milk Drink and the flinching move Stomp, however, they're gonna go. Instead of Stomp, we're gonna give it Return. Yes, it may deal more damage than Stomp, but it won't have a chance to flinch, which is the primary issue in my opinion. Now, Return's damage is based on friendship, and since it's a Gym Leader's Ace Pokemon, you'd assume it would be max friendship, right? Well, yeah, canonically, that would make sense. However, what Return allows us to do is essentially set the damage to whatever we want by amending the friendship value. This means we can set Return to around 60 or 70 base power for a balanced attacking move. If you don't like that idea, another fitting move would be Body Slam, however that is an 85 base power move, and it can also um, paralyze, so it's probably just as annoying as Stomp. Regardless of which one you prefer, it'll be this signature attack of the gym. I'm gonna go for a turn, since it plays into Whitney's vibe of friendship and adoring her Pokemon. So instead of Milk Drink, Milk Tank is gonna have access to healing in the form of Rest. It's also going to be holding the Gen 2 equivalent of the Chesto Berry, which will allow Miltank one free rest. The idea is that the Miltank can still retain its healing ability without being able to spam it like it can with Milk Drink. The Berry then also teaches the player about inventive ways of using held items. So what else is going to be joining the Lumpy Lard Lad? Well, one that I'm shocked she doesn't get already is Snubble. Yes, its cuteness can be debated, it's hardly EV levels of cute, but I think Whitney would be a fan of it. If she was in the real world, she'd be a fan of Pugs for sure. Not to mention, it has a female positive gender ratio. Bite and Lick will be thematic attacks, and Charm and Scary Face will hinder the players in preparation for that big, meaty milker. I think she would also benefit from a Flaffy. Pink, cute, feminine, it's not a normal type so it's going to avoid the fighting weakness that the other two have, and then Thunder Wave will just add an extra layer of disruption. So what do you think? In the recurring theme of Gen 2, here we go again. In the previous video, I mentioned how I don't think we have enough ghosts for a ghost specialist, and that holds up in Johto where the number of ghosts shot from 3 to 4. But with that being said, he doesn't even use the new ghost. We're gonna change Morty completely, but it won't be easy. Obviously, when it comes to ghost types, unless we want it to be his current team but with a mischievous slapped on, we're out of luck. So instead, we're gonna make him a dark type gym leader. I know this does clash with Karen of the Elite Four, so we're gonna have to change her as well, but if you do have any other ideas for Morty, do let me know in the comments below. So let's start with Houndoom. It's a decent dark type with an edgy design, something right up Morty's street. The dark and fire type moves give it great coverage, and then Raw is just a bit of disruption. The ace Pokemon, however, is going to be Umbreon. Although it is strong with a BST of 525, we don't really have many other options. Murkrow is with Faulkner, Sneasel is reserved for another gym leader, Tyranitar is an obvious no-go. So what else do we give him? Well, we'll give him the Pokemon that he always should have had, a Mischievous. It still makes sense for a dark type gym leader and I love the idea of having a very disruptive moveset. The final Pokemon is going to be knocked out. I've always been adamant that this thing should be a dark flying type, so I'm putting it on the team. I'm gonna give it a sinister moveset with attacks such as Nightmare and Dream Eater. If you're going to comment about this team, just keep in mind that I'm not the happiest with it, especially with the Karen issue, but I'll hand this one over to you. What would you do with Morty? Chuck continues the phenomenon I like to call the Jotonian fallacy. It's not a fallacy at all, but it does sound good, so we're going to go with it. This is essentially where you have a clear choice for a team member, but the Pokemon fails to be included in the team, and instead you just shove a load of Kanto Pokemon on the roster. So we've run into a little problem with Chuck. These are the new Jotonian fighting types. Obviously, Tyrogue is a no since it's a literal baby, Heracross is already with Bugsy, so if we want a Jotonian fighting type on the team, which I do, Hitmontop is going to have to be on the team, and because I refuse to have a Kanto Pokemon as a Johto leader's ace, it's going to be the ace Pokemon as well. This also means that the rest of the team needs to be either fighting type Kanto Pokemon or non-fighting type Johto Pokemon. Because of the rule set that we have in place, I'm going to have to use some Kanto fighting types. I personally only want one Tyrogue evolution on the team, and Machoke would intrude on Bruno too much. So then it's between Polyrath and Primeape. We can decide this by first looking at Bruno's team, because Bruno has a Hitmontop which we're going to have to replace since it's now Chuck's ace. 
So whichever of these two we give to Chuck, the other one is going to go to Bruno. And I think that the best way to do that is by doing it this way round. I always get the vibe that Bruno is more about discipline and technique, and Chuck is all about strength and constitution, so the more aggressive Primeape can go on Chuck's team. We are now out of fighting types, but let's turn our attention to some other Pokemon that I think would make a good addition. Donphan is a heavy, chunky boy. It's also based on a large tyre. A famous exercise is lifting and tipping a large tractor tyre, and I can also imagine Chuck commanding his Donphan to use Rollout against him so he can try and stop it. Another Jotonian Pokemon that makes sense to me would be Ursaring. It's a strong, bulky bear, and I think wrestling a bear is a good way of testing your strength. I honestly really like this team, but to be honest, it's a winning battle compared to the previous one. Jasmine, once again, is primarily Kanto Pokemon, and she has Magnemites. Oh no! What is that? Being magnetically drawn to the other two? Oh no! Oh well, it can stay. Alongside the Magneton, we're definitely keeping Steelix as the ace, with Iron Tail being the signature move. I'm also going to let Jasmine lead with a Foratress. It's a bulky wall if you ignore flames, and once again, a new Steel-type Pokemon. It's going to have typical moves like Takedown and Pin Missile, but it's also going to try and set up the Spikes, a move that will work very well with her other Steel-type Pokemon, Skarmory. I'm shocked that two level 30 Magnemites made the draft, but Skarmory didn't. As stated, since it can use Whirlwind to force switches, it will work well with the spikes of Foratress. For her last Pokemon, we're actually going to pick Corsola. Since the rest of the team is weak to fire, a 4 times resistance would be beneficial. It could set up the sand because her entire team is immune to the chip damage, but the main reason for picking Corsola is because it works for a lore reason as well. Although in battle she uses the newly discovered Steel-type Pokemon, a gentleman in the lighthouse does say that she used to train Rock-type Pokemon such as Onix. Clearly she evolved the Onix into a Steelix, but I have no idea what she did with the rest of her rock types. If you take into account every single appearance from the TCG, the anime, the games, the manga, the only time she's ever depicted with a rock type Pokemon is in Pokemon Stadium 2, and that Pokemon just so happens to be a Corsola. So this is her final team, it's a lot more interesting than two Magnemites and a Steelix, and it's considerably more difficult, which is what you want in a gym fight. The penultimate leader is Price. My opinion on Price is that he's very forgettable. Now let's state the obvious, with this gym, they messed up the levels. Price is canonically the 7th gym leader, but his ace is weaker than Jasmine's. Although I'm not setting levels for the gyms, just note that I'm expecting the player to have Pokemon around the level 37 mark, since this gym is in between an ace Pokemon of level 35 and 40. Due to this, pretty much all of the player's Pokemon should be fully evolved by the time they get to Jasmine, let alone Price. I'm sorry Seal, but you didn't make the cut. I expect the player to have a fully evolved starter at this point, and even Typhlosion with a type disadvantage would annihilate the baby boy, let alone five other Pokemon the player would likely have. So Seal is gone, but we're keeping the other two. Let's start with a returning ace Pokemon, Piloswine. It's a fine ace Pokemon, especially when you combine it with Earthquake and the new signature move, Ice Beam. Consistent, heavy damage that has decent type coverage, hitting 9 types for super effective damage between the two attacks. So what other Ice-type Johto Pokemon are we going to add? Well, it's ultimately between Sneasel and Delibird. The latter only has 5 more BST than Seal, so that's a hard no. Sneasel though is a great Pokemon and its speed allows it to be a great lead Pokemon, with moves like Ice Punch, Faint Attack and Screech. That's unfortunately where the Jotonian Ice-types fizzle out but we still have Kanto to steal from. So Seal isn't on the team, but Dugon can stay. It doesn't get much love elsewhere in the franchise, so it can make its mark here. I'm going to employ the same tactic we used for Whitney's Miltank, Mint Berry combined with Rest to give it some recovery. It will then have a Water and an Ice type attack, but it also have Encore because it's fun to imagine Dugon clapping with its big meaty flaps. Another Ice type I want to give Price is Cloister. A physical wall, it will make sure the player is prepared and knows the difference between physical and special defense. And then we move on to our final Pokemon, but there aren't any more Ice types that I'd want to include. Instead, I'm going to go for Stantler. It's a reindeer, so it has that icy vibe to it, but it's also stern and serious, attributes that I associate with Price himself. So what do you think of the Stantler edition? It's like an icy Pokemon because Christmas, right guys? Guys?
on to the final gym leader. I personally think that Claire's team is the worst offender in Johto. Okay, Faulkner, Bugsy, Morty, they all have terrible teams, but none of them do this. Let's get the one positive addition out of the way, she has a Jotonian ace Pokemon. But then we talk about the negatives. First of all, she has four Pokemon. In my honest opinion, the last gym leader should always have a team of six Pokemon. But then the main issue with the team is her Dragonairs. Not only are they Kanto Pokemon, but they're all the same apart from one move. Seriously, who greenlit this? This is absurd. But wait, the problems don't stop there because she's a dragon type specialist. She's already using both of the dragon types. So we're gonna get rid of two of the dragon air, but we have nothing else to replace it with. Dratini's too weak, Dragonite's taken by Lance, what do we do? We gotta think outside the box, that's what we gotta do. This is very similar to the Morty situation where we have a leader of a type that has no Pokemon to choose from. However, unlike Morty, we can't change Claire's speciality since then it won't really make sense with the Dragon's Den part of the game. Now I know we set a rule saying that at least half the team needs to be that type, but we physically can't do that with Claire. So instead, she's gonna loosely be a dragon specialist, she's gonna have a hint of dragon, she's gonna be the LaCroix of dragon specialists. So let's stop blabbering, let's get onto what her team is actually going to be. Evidently, her ace is of course staying as Kingdra, with the signature move staying as Dragon Breath. Since we only have one more dragon she can have, she's having the Dragonair, who saw that coming? The Dragonair is gonna have access to Outrage since we need a dragon type move that isn't Dragon Breath or terrible at this stage in the game. Seriously, there is no dragon type content in this game, why do we have two specialists? So onto the non-dragon types, and Claire is going to have a Seedra. It's not fully evolved, so I'm not really that happy about it, but it does have 440 BST, so it's not terrible. It does repeat an evolutionary line, but honestly, what other options do we have at this point? We're then taking some inspiration from Lance and having an Aerodactyl and a Gyarados. They're just two draconic looking Pokemon, so they seem to fit. Yes, we are kind of just repeating Lance's team, but slightly different. They're literally two dragon type specialists back to back. Then for the last Pokemon, I thought outside the box. I was gonna give her a Tyranitar since it does rival Lance's Dragonite and it is Kaiju inspired with some Kaijus being Draconic. But the issue is it didn't feel right to have Tyranitar on the team unless it was the ace Pokemon and it can't be the ace Pokemon because it's not a Dragon type. I then considered for Alligator but I don't want to use starters. I then decided to stop taking the term Dragon literally and instead looked at Pokemon that are legendary. Metaphorically, not literally. Pokemon like Arcanine, the legendary Pokemon? Yes, it's not a dragon type or even reptilian, but come on. It's everything that a dragon is, just not a dragon. <laughs> I think it's the closest non-dragon dragon that we're gonna get, and I think it's quite a good addition to the team. But I can already hear the hate comments being typed out, so if you think of anything else, please do let me know in the comments below. I greatly appreciate your input on this one, please. So that is how I would fix the Johto Gym Leaders. I'm sure you've already put your honest opinion in the comments below, so thank you for that. But that's all I've got for you, so bye. Just before we sign off completely, I ran this concept past a few of my PokeTuber friends to see how they would amend the Johto Gym Leaders. The results varied. First of all, we have Berry Nerd Corner, who smashed the assignment. He made a team for every single Johto Gym Leader, including movesets and items. Now I do hate how I can't go over all of this because there's so much to take in, but he did an amazing job. A couple of things that caught my eye, slow poke on Bugsy's team, makes sense. He also made Morty a dark type gym leader, but most importantly, he gave Claire an Arcanine. I feel vindicated. And then we have good old Brandon from BP Nuzlocks, and he said, give Whitney's Miltank a choice scarf and Serene Grace. Why do you choose violence? And then RJ chimed in because he had a better idea for Whitney, apparently. But he's only supplied the Pokemon and the nicknames, but I think he gets his point across. But in all seriousness, if you do want to check them out, their socials will be in the pinned comment down below. Great content, great people. Go check them out. I'm going to leave these names on screen while we do the outro, but that's all I've got for you, so bye.